guys, welcome to Craig Vinyl and a special episode here for you today. And we're not talking about vinyl for this, my episode 11, but we're talking beer. Beautiful beer. Um, a couple of you know who I am a home brewer. It's been a little while, but um, I thought it's probably been a couple of years since I've made one of these. So there's probably some of you out there thinking, hmm, I wouldn't mind giving this a crack. So I'm going to help you. This, we're going to make a Cooper's Mexican Cerveza or like a Corona type beer. This is a real simple beer kit, so um, let's get stuck on it. But first, we've got to make sure all our equipment's clean, so let's go clean. Okay guys, everything's clean now. It's now ready to prepare some items. And uh, sorry about the glare there. That might be a bit better. So this is a, what's called a liquid malt extract. It's already pre-hopped. So in here, they've already malted the grains, convert it to a liquid malt extract and added hop flavors to make it a simple kit. It saves money and it saves a lot of time. So something I don't have much at the moment. We've also got this brew enhancer. So brew enhancer includes the fermentable sugars and also some light dry malt extract. The light dry malt extract will help give the beer some body and full flavor, a beery taste. And the fermentable sugars or dextrose in here, um, when, when we add the yeast, the yeast will eat the sugar and convert the sugar to alcohol. So what I'm going to do is just get a big pot going with a couple of liters of water, get that boiling. Then I'll enter this brew and Hansen mix in here, pour that all in, stir it up. And once that's done, we'll then add in our pre-hopped liquid malt extract, stir all that up, and then that will go in our fermenter. So the smells are amazing when you do that. And so it just takes a little, little bit of time, but real simple. So I'll just add with, uh, with the pre-hop kit liquid malt extract. Um, under the lid here is normally where the yeast packet is, so let's have a look at that. And there it is there. Look, it's probably not the greatest yeast you can use in beer. You don't really know how long it's been here, what condition it's traveled in. But look, it does the job with my experience. It still gives you a good flavor beer. Nothing, no off taste, no off flavors, that type of thing. So just follow the instructions that come with this kit and you are good to go. Okay guys, I've got two liters of boiling, uh, water almost boiling. When it nears the boil, I'll turn the flame out and then I'll add in the Cooper's uh, Brew Enhancer and then stir that through. Okay, next bit is to enter the, the pre-hop malt extract. Just take the lid off. Just be careful, it's very gooey. Stir that in. I've just got the stove turned back on towards a medium setting to help blend this through. 
and just get your spoon and try and get all that goodness out of there. We want to maximize the flavor in our Corona style beer. Andale, andale! Okay, yeah, we've got uh, everything mixed in beautifully in this pot now. We're now going to transfer this to our fermenting chamber. So let's go do that now. Okay, now that's poured in, we need to add our water. Um, obviously the cleaner water the better. I've got good filter water here that I use, so um, I'll pour that in. They say up to 23 litres, but I normally do up around 18 litres. It just gives it a bit more uh, <laughs> stronger beer that I like, so um, please yourself. And I'll add that water now. to add some some cold water I've got in the fridge really cold water just to top it up to around 20 litres and that'll help cool down the wort as it's called the wort and uh, you want that around sort of uh, between say 18 and 25 degrees Celsius before pitching your yeast so I'll just go add that water now okay uh, we've now got our wort at uh, close to pitching temperature um, Ideally, you want to pitch your, your, your yeast um, as soon as you can. Um, the longer you leave it, the chance for developing off flavors can occur. So I'm going to pitch this now. So I've just got to open this little baby. Uh, it's about, I'm not sure, it might be around 8 grams or so of, of brewer's yeast, which is part of the, um, the Cooper's liquid malt extract that I showed you before. So I'm just going to pitch this yeast uh, all I do is I open up, I sprinkle it, uh, I sprinkle it in top, uh, in top of, I take the lid off, and I will sprinkle that onto the top of the wort there. That's all I need to do. There's no mixing required. Some people mix it, I don't, I just sprinkle it on top. Uh, you can sort of dab it down with a spoon gently if you like, but it's all up to you, but I just sprinkle it on top. I actually do uh, just push it down the yeast granules uh, slightly into the wort and then probably in about 24 to 48 hours uh, we'll see this is the airlock on top so while the yeast is eating all the sugars in the wort uh, CO2 is released and I'll have water in here and we'll see some bubbles showing you the release of CO2 so I generally leave it in here for about one week uh, so we'll do that and uh, in the next day or two, I'll just film this airlock bubbling away. If all things going well, that should happen. And uh, we'll go from there. So see you then. Okay, guys, it's been about uh, six days now. Uh, six days since... Uh, this uh, beer here's been fermenting in my in my fermenting chamber, and I'm pretty sure that it has stopped fermenting now. Uh, at the top here, where I showed you earlier, the um, the airlock, the bubble stopped quite a few days ago. Even though the bubble stopped, um, it doesn't mean it's completely uh, fermented out. So you really want to make sure that it is fermented out. So what I've got here is called a hydrometer. If you can see that. So the hydrometer measures the specific or the gravity of the beer and use those readings there. So uh, when I, what you do is you first measure just prior to pitching the yeast, which I did measure, it was 1.04. Um, and one trick to find out if, if the beer is finished fermenting is to um, take a couple of readings 
within say 12 to 24 hours and you want both of those readings stable stable so whatever it reads here on the scale you want that to read the same if it's if it reads the same it means it's finished fermenting out so I'm just going to take a, a reading now uh, see how we go Sorry about this footage here, you can't see. I'm just filling the beer in that tube. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is just spin this tube. That beer is looking good, a little bit of a head there, so it's a good sign. So, I'm just spinning that tube. And uh, I'm just going to place it up here. Just bear with me while I move the camera. Up on the bench. I'm just going to give that a minute to stabilise and let that head come down a bit. Then I'll take a reading. And I'll report back shortly and let you know what that reading was. Uh, fingers crossed today um, we'll be bottling. So um, I'll be back shortly for that. Okay, guys, I've uh, just measured that. It came out... Um, so as I, I mentioned, the the gravity at the beginning before I pitched the yeast, it was 1.04. Uh, the gravity at the end is now settled, and it was 1.013. Uh, there's an equation online. You can do plenty of equations, which basically takes the original gravity less the final gravity, does a calculation. Um, it's come out at about 3.54% alcohol. That's the alcohol content of the beer. So... Um, Pretty much on the mark where I wanted, around maybe a little bit lower than I thought. I actually just tasted a bit um, out of the the tube that I showed you before, and it's tasting really good. So you know, for a a basic beer kit uh, with a little bit of addition, and it tastes that good. Um, I mean, you just got to do it. It's worthwhile. Give it a crack. All right, uh, I'll be back shortly, and we'll clean the bottles and start bottling. Okay, so uh, everything's been rinsed and washed and dried. Um, I mean, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of questions people have on just on you know cleaning alone. Um, and that's just one small part of home brewing. So if you do have any questions about any aspects, um, please just uh, put them down in the comment section. And I'll um, be more than happy to answer them. So this is just my general process of what I do. I line up four bottles here. They've already dried. I've got the cap sitting here. And um, in here I've got sugar drops. So I generally put one to two in each bottle, depending on what beer I'm making. Um, this one I'll probably do, uh, let me think. Cause <laughs> Look, what I'll do is I'll put two in each one. Obviously the more sugar, it's called priming sugar, so it helps keep the beer carbonated um, in here. So I'll drop two, two into each bottle, and then we'll uh, fill the bottle up with our wort, which is now our beer from this fermenter. So um, let's get to it. Okay, I finished bottling. Uh, how many have I got there? I've 24 700ml bottles. And that cost me Australian about to make, uh, including a bit of priming sugar, say $23. Uh, US dollars, that's probably uh, $18 US to make 24 700ml bottles. Mexican cervezas or Coronas as you'd like to call it. So, all right guys, thank you so much. If you're still watching this, I appreciate it. Put all your comments below. I know home brewing community is a big community and uh, there are a lot of questions to be asked. So please post them below. And for my vinyl community, 
Thank you so much for sticking this out. Maybe you learnt something. Maybe you thought you're going to give this a crack. Let me know in the comments if you do. And uh, post any pictures and questions. I'm here to help. So um, anyway, my next video will be back to vinyl. So cheers out.